All right, what's up guys? Today I'll be teaching you guys how to use masks in Hashcat. So the first thing you wanna do is install Hashcat. Uh, if you've already installed it, you can skip ahead. Go to hashcat.net, go to Hashcat binaries and click download. Right now it's at version 6.1.1. If you have something newer, go for that. Uh, I wouldn't go for anything older because Hashcat is really good at keeping its stuff updated. Uh, you're going to need 7-zip in order to extract it. So I'm actually going to have to go to my file here, go to downloads, 7-zip, and extract here. And we get hashcat 6.1. We're going to copy that, and then we're going to put it into the path that we want it to be in. So for this, I'm going to put it into my user path. And to get there, I go to this PC, my C drive, and then I go to users and then my user. I'm just gonna right click and paste it in here. And that's gonna take a while. So I'm just gonna let that run. Once that is complete, I'm actually gonna move over a text file that I need. Actually, two text files. We also need, no, we don't need a word list because we are using masks this time. I have three different Hashcat installs right now. It's getting a little confusing. I'm gonna have to go and uh, purge some of those. So we're gonna use our tip that we learned in our last video, which I will link up here. And we can type in CMD into this top bar and it will take us straight to Hashcat. Gonna minimize this, make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna type in Hashcat dot exe and then dash h for help and it's going to give us a lot of stuff but we're going to focus on char sets so if you look brute force is the one that we're going to use because brute force we apply the mask to brute force you can also apply masks to word lists so say you had a word list and you wanted to add a mask to the beginning or end you could do that uh, but for this video, we're just going to do brute force masks, um, but char sets. So if you want to do a mask, it's going to have these different letters. So L is for lowercase alphabet, U is uppercase alphabet, D is for digits, um, H is for half of the alphabet, or A through F and 0 through 9. H is the same thing, but it's uppercase. S is special characters. A is a special hash not has a special mask that uh, hashcat has built in uh, it has a lowercase letter an uppercase letter a digit and a special character and then b is the hex values from zero zero all the way to ff so this will encompass everything even uh, super special characters that aren't on normal north american keyboards uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to type in hashcat Dot exe and our mode is three because we're doing attack mode brute force which is three and then dash m zero because i'm doing a md5 hash that i have already uh, this is going to depend on the type of hash you are doing so if you're doing uh, wpa oh, it's wi-fi and stuff that's going to be 2400 or 2500 i always forget uh, but MD5 is 0, SHA1 is 100, uh, let's look for WPA real quick, WPA, 2500, so I was correct on the first time. Uh, you can do this for iTunes or PDF or ZIP, and I'll put those videos up here as well, so you guys can go check those out. But for this video, we are just going to do MD5 hash. So we're going to put in our MD5 hash, and I named that mask hashes.txt and then we're going to do our mask so for your mask you do a question mark and then your first char set so for my first password I'm going to have all lowercase letters the password is password so we're going to make a char set that's going to crack the word password so we do lowercase l and we do this over and over for eight I think password is eight letters if I can do math. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna hit enter 
and we're going to see if it cracks our password. It gets the first one and it's not going to get the rest of them because they require a different mask. So let's cancel this one, hit Q to quit, and we're going to try a new mask. So a lot of passwords require a uppercase letter for signing into different web logins and stuff. So we're going to put an uppercase letter as the first one and the rest of them are going to be lowercase and we're going to see what that gets us. Go in and uh, it's not an uppercase U, it is a lowercase U, which is kind of, and it gets our password. So you can see it is a uppercase P and then the rest of it is password. We're gonna hit Q to quit. And a lot of other password requirements or that is that it has a digit or a special character. So at the end, I'm just gonna add a digit. So we're gonna do D for digit and we're also going to have the uppercase letter in the front and we're going to see what that gets us. Uh, I might not have the uppercase letter in the front actually now that I think about it. Let us see. Mass caches. Oh, it doesn't show us. We'll just have to find out. No, it looks like I do have the uppercase letter because it didn't crack it, and that should definitely crack it. Status, it is cracking at 11,000 mega hashes per second. Um, and did we get it? Let's look at the pot file here. So in the pot file has all of your cracked hashes. Uh, we only see two of them. So, oh, I know what I did. I, instead of adding a digit, I took away a letter and then put a digit. So let's try it again with an uppercase and a digit. And there we go, we crack it, password one. So one of the big uses for this is Netgear routers. Uh, Netgear routers have a word, so they have a adjective, a noun, and then three letters, something like, uh, Big Bear 502, uh, I just made that one up, but there are a lot of Netgear routers, especially in suburban areas and even in uh, small businesses and other things that need penetration testers to come and make sure that their passwords are secure. And Netgear passwords have been secure for a long time, but now that the word lists that Netgear used are actually out there on the internet. So now they have the nouns and the adjectives that Netgear used. You can just add a mask at the end, just put three digits at the end of those two words and you have every Netgear password in the world. Um, so that's a really cool use for this. Uh, there's obviously other uses. If you know, hey, I always put two numbers at the end of my password or I have a uppercase here and an uppercase in the middle or I put a number here It'll be a lot easier to crack your password if you've forgotten it in the future or something like that. So if you guys like this video, hit like, get subscribed, hit that bell icon if you guys want to see more, and I'll see you guys all later.